Hey everybody, welcome back to Miss Monday. I'm so happy that you've joined me here this morning or afternoon or night, whenever it is that you're watching or listening. Um, before we get started, I just wanna say thank you for everybody who's been subscribing and who's been sharing these teachings. We love getting the feedback, so keep up the good work. We love you and thank you for supporting us and spreading the word. So if you've not already subscribed, go ahead and do that now. Hit the subscribe button follow us, um, and then share this so that your friends and family are also blessed. Now, today we're going to be talking about purity. Purity, the gateway to perfection. Um, I'm going to give you five ways to pursue purity and reach perfection in every area of your life. Now, we're not going to be talking about purity in a sexual way, like what usually you think of purity, you know, like being sexually pure or abstaining until marriage and all of that. We're going to go a little bit further than that okay so think of it outside of the box here think of purity as freedom from contamination or the quality or state of being pure the state of being pure or you could say in a Christian's life you know freedom from sin so freedom from sin now in Titus 115 it says to the pure all things are pure but to the defiled and unbelieving nothing is pure but both their minds and their conscience are defiled so you've got to think about your mind and your conscience either being pure or defiled and it says to the pure meaning you can be pure so um, now without a pure heart it's absolutely impossible to make the right decisions in life you can't really go on without entangling yourself once again in something that doesn't please the Lord or doesn't reflect Jesus if there's no pursuit of purity the pursuit of purity is what we're talking about here today. So purity isn't something that you just have when you're young and then you lose somewhere along the way. Uh, purity is something that you are constantly going after. Purity is something you have to choose to chase after, no matter what decisions that you've made in life up until this point, no matter how bad they are, no matter how filthy that they've made you feel, Purity can still be yours, and it can be yours today in the mighty name of Jesus. And I'm going to tell you exactly how to achieve that. Now, I want you all to pray this over yourselves, and you can pray it right now. You can repeat it after me. I want you to pray Psalms 51, 10. Say, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Now, that, let, let Psalms 51.10, you know, be the cry of your heart this week as you choose to pursue purity. The, the pursuit of purity is so, it's so pivotal. It's so important because purity is truly the gateway to perfection. And, and you know, we can be perfect. Did you know you can be perfect? And, and I know most Christians would actually probably disagree with me on this. But that's, you know, people. you hear people say, like, oh, I'm not Jesus. Well, I'm not Jesus. I'm not perfect. Jesus was the only perfect one. But that's not what my Bible says. No, my Bible doesn't say that. My Bible says that the spirit of Jesus resides on the inside of me, that it's living in me, and it's actively working in me and through me. And it even says that greater things, that I will do here on this earth than even Jesus did while he was here on this earth. See, when Jesus died, he sent his Holy Spirit to reside on the inside of us so that we can live pure, holy, righteous, powerful lives representing him to everyone, everywhere, in every season, even the difficult seasons of our life. We can do it because we have his spirit living in us. See, without Jesus dying, he could have never sent his spirit to live in us. And it's only because we have his spirit living in us that we can live pure. So folks, you don't have to say anymore, well, I'm not Jesus. No, you're not Jesus, but you do have him living inside of you. He is working through you. And so no more. I don't want to hear anybody say, oh, well, I'm not Jesus. No, none of that because we have him living in us. We have his power living in us. And I just want to tell you this right now, if you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, 
with the evidence of speaking in tongues, you must. You must seek after that. You must ask the Lord to fill you with this Holy Spirit, and He will do it with the evidence of speaking in tongues because without the Holy Spirit, purity is impossible. You know, it's the power of the Holy Spirit that keeps us on the right path. Matthew 5, 48 says, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. 1 John 3, 6, whoever abides in me sins not. Whoever sins has not seen me, neither knows me. James 1, 4, but let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire without wanting nothing. Romans 12, 1 through 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. This is your reasonable service. So now we know that we are actually called to perfection. And we know now that God actually considers it himself something reasonable that we can obtain, something that's actually reasonable for us to do. And why is that? You, you think, well, I can't be perfect. How can I be perfect? We're not going to be perfect till we get to heaven. But see, God knows that it's possible because he knows the one that lives inside of you. He knows the power that lives in you makes it possible. It's just now you have to know that. We each have to convince ourselves now of that truth by renewing our minds by the washing of the word, by, by believing everything we read in this Bible. So there's um, five prerequisites. I was going to say three. There's five prerequisites to purity. Remember, purity is the gateway to perfection, and we are called to live perfect, right? So James 4, 7 through 8, submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinner, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So I'm going to break this down into the five prerequisites for purity. So the first one, submit to God. Submit to God. So do what his word says to do. Whatever you read in here, if you're not doing it, change that. Do it. So be faithful at a local church. You know, uh, submit yourself to your pastors. Get filled with the Holy Spirit. Tithe. Serve. Uh, be kind to others. Be thankful. All of the things we read in the Bible, just do it. Be doers of the word. Submit yourself to God. So the second thing is resist the devil. So you resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Well, when temptation comes your way, you you literally say out loud with your mouth because you have the power of Jesus in you. You have authority. Jesus walks around with authority, right? That means you walk around with authority. You say, devil, not today. Not today, devil. I mean, we've all heard that that blew up over social media. Not today, devil. So say that. And he has to go because he has to bow to the name of Jesus, to the authority of Jesus. And he will leave you alone. Because of Jesus living inside of you, you know, the power you carry is stronger than the power that the devil has. It is. And it'll win out every single time. All right, number three, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Call upon the name of the Lord. Listen to his voice. Read his word. Praise him, worship him, honor him, thank him. All of these ways you're drawing close to him. Surround yourself with people that are doing that. And that's how you're drawing closer to God. And he, his word promises that he will also be close to you. Now, the fourth thing, it says, wash your hands, you sinners. So that just means literally get rid of all the sin from your life. Get rid of any temptation. Get rid of people that might promote something unclean in your life. You know, clean up shop. You know, are you addicted to shopping? I know there was a point in my life where I was going through, a, this was before I gave my life to the Lord. I was going through just terrible things. My therapy, you know how you hear it called shopping therapy. Well, that was really what it was for me. I was addicted to shopping. It's what made me feel happy. It's what I did. Now, if you have an addiction with shopping, so remember, what does the word say? Wash your hands. Cut up the credit card. Whatever it is that's causing you to sin, be rid of it, all right? Do you struggle with getting drunk? Throw out all the alcohol in your house. Do not allow it to be in your home. Do not go hanging around with your drinking buddies, with your old drinking buddies. Don't do that. 
You know, don't go to the same places that you used to go with. Uh, you know, the, the places that you used to go. Do you fall in love way too easy and way too fast and then fall into bed? If that's the case, make a decision. Stop hanging out with the opposite sex one-on-one. -on -one. Cut it off. Don't do it. Don't allow yourselves to become best friends with the opposite sex. You know, hang around in groups. See, there's very practical decisions and boundaries that we can create to wash our hands from sin. So it really means that to literally wash your hands of it. Anything that represents that thing that used to entangle you in sin, whatever that is for you, you have to totally wash your hands of it. Just walk away from it. Actually, no, run away from it. Just run. Run as fast as you can. All right, the fifth and final thing that this scripture instructs us to do is to purify our hearts. And it says, purify your hearts, you double-minded. See, purity is a decision. We've already said that. Purity is in your heart, uh, it's, it's what purposing to have a pure heart leads to having a pure life. And you just do it. You just make a decision that you want to have a pure heart, and then you, you do that. You literally just make that decision and you follow through with it. Otherwise, you're a double-minded person. The Bible says a double-minded man, or in this case, woman, is unstable in all of their ways. Your life will just fall apart eventually. You're unstable in all of your ways when you're double-minded. You can't be one foot in the Word of God and one foot in the world. You have to make a decision to pursue purity. It will end in perfection if you do that. Um, now, 1 John 3, 9 says, Those who have been born into God's family, so that means you ask Jesus into your heart, do not make a practice of sinning because God's life is in them. God's life is in you. So they cannot keep sinning because they are children of God. So literally, it just said you can't go on sinning, meaning that it is possible indeed for you to live a purely perfected life in Christ Jesus. Boom. Done. Just like that. It is possible. Now, however, perfection is not something that, that just happens overnight. It, it, it takes time. It takes one thing at a time. You pray. You ask the Holy Spirit to reveal the areas in your life that need to be purified by his fire. You know, just like a diamond, it just looks like a dull, yucky rock. And then it's thrown into the heat. It's put into the fire and it comes out purified, a shining diamond. And that is what God's plan is for you, to be a shining diamond, beautiful, the best cut, sparkling bright. That is God's plan for you. So you ask the Holy Spirit to show you the areas in your life that need to be purified, and he will. I promise he will. He'll show you every single area. And then you, what you do is you listen to the Holy Spirit and you tackle that thing head on. I mean, you hit that thing head on and you get rid of it out of your life and then you move to the next thing and then you move to the next thing and you move to the next thing and so on and I'm telling you eventually that ends in perfection so we have to choose you see now how important it is to choose purity because it's the purity in each individual thing in our life that the Holy Spirit brings up to us in our prayer time but he says, all right, now you need to deal with this so it's it's having a pure heart in that area and then once that's perfected Go on, ask the Holy Spirit for another thing. Once that's perfected, again, again, and eventually your life will be perfected. You know, I'm going to read you quite some scripture here, all right, um, because first of all, let me just back up one moment here, because the main question is, will you see that perfection before heaven? And because I know that's a lot of people's rebuttal. Well, you only will be perfect once you make it to heaven. But actually, it's not true. See, perfection is possible. God said it was possible. But it is also very dependent upon how willing you are to make sacrifices. How much flesh and fleshly desires are you willing to put to death? And that is really basically 
asking the question of how hard are you willing to pursue purity? How hard are you willing to pursue purity? Now, I want you to go with me. I want you to get your Bible out. I want you to read this with me, underline stuff, circle stuff, highlight it. Um, we're going to read in Philippians 3. We're going to read from 10 to 21. Okay, 3, 10 to 21. So we're going to start with 10. It says, this is Paul writing, I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death, so that one way or the other, I will experience the resurrection from the dead. Now, I want to pause there because I want to explain that. When he's talking about, I want to suffer with him and share in his death, that's talking about putting his flesh to death. When we choose to put our flesh to death, we rise up with Christ Jesus in that resurrection, in the new, pure, perfected life of Christ Jesus, living that power that raised him from the dead. That power lives in us, and that's what raises us out of the junk into purity. So that's what he's talking about. And it says, I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death. It's painful sometimes to put your flesh under. It is. It's not easy. I'm not telling you that it's a, a cakewalk. It can't, it will be eventually because you see the benefit of it. But in the beginning, it is tough to put your flesh down, to not do something you really want to do, to say goodbye to some friendships. You know, those decisions you have to make, they're uncomfortable and they're not fun at first. But when you see the resurrection take place in your life, it's so worth it. And there's so much freedom and so much joy that comes with it. So let's keep going. Verse 12, I don't mean to say I've already achieved these things or that I've already reached reached perfection, but meaning it's possible. All right. But I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. So we press on. That's the goal here. Our job is the pursuit of purity. We press on to get and to achieve that perfection. No, dear brothers and sisters, I've not yet achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. There is a call to perfection here, a call to pursue purity in the name of Jesus. Let all who are spiritually mature, this is verse 15, agree upon these things. If you would disagree at some point, I believe God will make it plain to you. And that's the thing. If you're questioning this right now, listening to this teaching, I know because the word of God says that we believe strongly God's going to reveal the, the importance of purity and, and pursuing purity to you in the name of Jesus. But we must hold on to the progress that we've already made. See, you you perfect one thing, you move on to the next one. We have to keep up that progress and stop taking steps backwards. It's only a decision. Dear brothers and sisters, verse 17, pattern your lives after mine and learn from those who follow our example. For I have told you often before, and I say it again with tears in my eyes, that there are many whose conduct, show that they are really enemies of the cross of Christ, of the cross of Christ. They are headed for destruction. Their God is their appetite. They brag about shameful things and they think only about their life here on this earth. But we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives and we are eagerly awaiting for him to return as our savior. He will take our weak mortal bodies and change them into glorious bodies like his own using the same power with which he will bring everything under his control, with which he will bring everything under his control. See Matthew 5, 8 says, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. Do you want to see God show up and show out in every area of your life, bringing every bit of chaos in your life under his control? Then chase after purity and end with perfection in the mighty name of Jesus. Remember, pray this week, Psalms 5110, into your life. I want you to pray this. Create in me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. So ask the Holy Spirit to show you the areas that need to be polished and then get to work, ladies. Get to work. Good things are in store for you. I'm excited to be pursuing purity with you. And so have an amazing week. I cannot wait to see you next week. Don't forget to share this teaching so that your friends and families can also be blessed. We love you. We'll see you next Monday.